maybe you can unpack with me what's going on, okay? So here's where I've begun, in just the same way as I did before. I'm like, oh cool, I've got a pair of equations. This pair of equations is even nicer than the previous one because both of them are y equals and y equals. So you can just put them together, you can just connect them directly, okay? Which is like, ooh, that's handy. Okay? And then you start doing what you normally do, right? What can I do to simplify this equation? Add x. I'm gonna add x to both sides, right? Because there's a minus x, minus x. So if I add x to both sides, what will I end up with on the left? x squared minus 2. Plus x squared plus 2. Plus 2, right? That plus doesn't go anywhere. And then on the right-hand side, I get 0. zero. Now, you're looking at this and you're thinking, oh, OK, so now I should factorize, I guess. And then you run into a brick wall, right? So you make it x is good as equal to minus 2. So, so you could, I mean, we, we tried it over here, right? You're like, oh, what else can I do, right? So you could subtract 2 from both sides. But then this leads to even more problems, right? Because now we're saying, hold on, there's some number. And you square it, and apparently you get negative 2, right? Now, when you take the square to both sides, you're like, okay, this is not happening, right? What do you say of this? You have a way to conclude this, right? You would say, no real solutions, right? Okay, there are no answers to this. Now, I'm going to ask you the same question here. You know how we got to the end? We got to the end of here. We got some values for x, and we're like, cool, are we done? And you told me no, right? Well, here, I've found there are no values for x. Are we done? The answer is no. I have not answered the question. The question says, find the points of intersection. If there are no real solutions, what does that mean about the points of intersection? It means, well, you have Desmos there, right? Can you pull that open? And you've got a different pair of equations to put in this, right? Yes. It doesn't work, does it? Yeah, so. Yeah, it doesn't. It's not happy with you either, is it? So let's have a look at this. Okay, so here are my old equations. So let's get some new ones in here. Uh, what did we say? X squared. What was my equation? Minus x minus 2. Minus x plus 2, thank you. Okay, are you seeing what I'm seeing? Right. So here's my parabola, right? Here's my straight line. And what's it doing? It's going diagonal. It's like, yeah, 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 see you later, okay, bye. Right? Where do they intersect? Answer, they never intersect. The reason why we found no real solutions is because there are no points of intersection. And there's no guarantee that you get intersection points. And sometimes that's exactly what you're supposed to find, that they never intersect. That was kind of the point. So my conclusion, my actual thing that I would write at the end of here is there are no points of intersection. That's my answer. Right? You asked me to find them, but they don't exist. Okay? So just because you didn't get any numbers at the end, that doesn't mean you can't answer the question. The answer to the question is there are no points of intersection. Okay? So no fancy R. Uh, well, I've written my fancy R here at this point to indicate like what could I do with that equation? Answer, that's as far as I could go. But now I'm going to, oh, there it is. Now I'm going to come back to the original question just like I did in this line here. Right? It's like you ask for points, I'll give you points. Right? Say it again. Well, I don't, I don't have any points. Like, look at this line of working here. There are no points. So my final line will be, there are no points of intersection. Or I could say they don't intersect. Either would be the same. OK? For, for a second, we're all getting to some various points and raising some really great questions. So that's why I want us to um, reconvene. So just have a look at my working. And I want to ask you this question. It's not finished yet. But I just want to ask you whether this is what you wrote down or something different. Do you think that what I've written so far is okay? Like, have I made any mistakes or does it check out to you? Because I, I do make mistakes. Have I made any? No, because I've not done any. We could both be wrong. <laughs> I don't know. Um, do we have consensus? I'm not, I know I'm not finished, but does this look okay to you? Yes. Okay, good. Now, some of you got to this point and you're like, ugh. What, what do I do with that? Like, I know that factorizing was a thing I should try to do, but that looks gross. Like, what do I do with this thing, right? Now, some of you, for example, you're like, ooh, ooh, these guys have a common x. I'll take an x out, right? When you go x times 2 minus x, and then, like, this guy's just hanging around. You're like, what a jerk, right? Now, this is part of why. 
Early on, when we first learned about quadratic equations, right, we said, hey, we like to write our quadratic equations in this form, right? And just like with the straight line here, right, we call this what form? General. general form, right? Now, general form is not the only one. We also learned about vertex form. We learned about this form. Do you remember this guy? Uh, you can write a minus or a plus there, right? So this is to help you find the vertex. We looked at this. We did, I promise, okay? So general form is not useful for everything, but it is useful for factorizing. And at the moment, part of why this looks gross is because it is not in a nice, neat general form. Okay, so here's what I'm going to do. Firstly, as I have written up here, right, I'm going to write it in the correct, well, a, a more helpful order, right? So I'm going to write it with the x squared term first, and then the x term, and then the constant, like so, okay? These are equal, but I can make this even better for myself. See how there's that minus sign there? I don't like minus signs. Minus signs confuse my brain. So can someone tell me something I can do to both sides that would get rid of that minus sign? Yeah, Rasen. Can we just move it to the other side, x squared minus 2x? Okay, so you can add x squared to both sides. I guess if you were going to do that, you would have to subtract 2x as well, and you'd have to add 1 as well, and everything ends up moving. There's an easier thing I can do, which just leaves everything where it is, but without a minus sign. Yeah, apparently. If I multiplied everything through by negative 1, this first term would turn into x squared. What about the next one? Minus 2x, and then the next one? Do you recognize this as something you can factorize? Yes. You should, right? What kind of... It's not just any factorization. What is this? It's a special factorization. It's a perfect square. Thank you. So I can write this as something all squared. What is the something? X minus 1. Now, here, we've seen this before, right? How many solutions are there to this particular equation? There's just the 1, right? And this will give us a y value of y equals 1 take away 4, which is negative 3. So I'm getting this. And that's the only point that I'm getting. Now some of you are like, really? I mean, we got two solutions one time. We got zero solutions the next time. Could we get just one solution? Well, let's have a look. What were the equations I gave you? x squared minus 4. And what was the other one? Uh, 2x minus y minus 5. 2x minus y minus 5. Okay, what do we got here? What does this mean? It intersects at It intersects at just one point. And in fact, it just touches is exactly the right word. This is actually worth writing down. Can I ask you to where you've done the working for this question? Can you draw for me a rough sketch of this? It doesn't have to be big or beautiful. It doesn't have to be precise. But there's actually something important I want to catch here. This blue line here on this particular graph, it gains a special name. And again, it's a name we're going to make a big deal out later. But it's a name you actually already know. When a line just kind of goes by and just sort of touches, it starts with a T. Does anyone know what this is called? This is called a tangent. Now, tangent. This is how you spell the word tangent. T-A-N-G-E-N-T. -E There's another word in the English language that comes from the same place as tangent. When something, when you can touch something, like this table, right, you can touch it. So we have a word for that. We call it a tangible object. Right? It's tangible because you can hold on to it as opposed to like a number. It's like you can't hold a number, right? Now, the fact that it's just touching, that it just intersects, just like that, makes this line, once you've drawn that straight line on there, can you please label it as such? This is a tangent. It's pretty special. We'll come back to it a bit later on. Okay? All right. Now, this last one, I'm actually not going to get you to do the last one right now. I just want you to look at it. I'm even going to be nice and show you the working for it. So just put your pens out of your hands for a brief moment. The reason why I included this one in the list is that sometimes you get two solutions, sometimes you get none, sometimes you get one, but all the questions you've looked at so far, the answers have been like really nice and neat, haven't they? What did we just say? Um, one, negative three. That's this solution, right? But if you have a look at that last one there, I think I've got it just here. This is what happens. Um, you start to put them together, and then you get to this thing, and you're like, ah, oh, gross. I can't think of a way to factorize this. So you do what you should normally do, which is go towards the formula or completing the square. And you're going to get some numbers out of this. Eventually, you get some numbers. But because they're not nice, you get thirds flying around. Now, that doesn't mean that you can't do this question. It just means that when you do it, um, 
your answers are going to be a little bit gross looking. Okay, if you go ahead and you put this into Desmos, what you'll find is um, it will just hand you some weird decimal values when you look for where those points of intersection are. Okay, uh, but these are the actual spots where they exist. So it's just a caution that often your solutions will be nice and neat, but there's no guarantee that they have to be because you can totally solve them even when they're not. It just takes a little more patience and a little more care. All right.